ending among the among the peoples of the world to promote the principles of good government and good citizenship. Next slide, please. Uh, to unite the clubs, sorry, to unite the clubs in bonds of friendship, good fellowship and mutual understanding, to provide a forum to the open discussion of all matters of public interest, provided, however, that partisan politics and sectarian religion shall not be debated by club members. And so that's where you will hear, oh, we're not religious. Oh, we're not um, political. That was why is because our purpose is to be open, to be diverse. And then finally, to encourage service-minded people like us, like our friends, to serve their community without personal financial reward and to encourage efficiency and promote high ethical standards in commerce, industry, professions, public works, and private endeavors. So a little bit of this sounds quite overwhelming, I think, but these are the purposes for lions around the world, not just for your club, not just for my club, and not just for constitutional area A. So this is the purpose of Lions Clubs International. Next slide, please. Our code of ethics for Lions Club International is to show my faith in the worthiness of my vocation by industrious application to the end that I may merit a reputation for quality of service. Now, a lot of Lions Clubs will even start their meetings with the code of ethics. Some district um, cabinet meetings do, and even some multiple districts do. And I do encourage every Lion here to read these again when we're not together and to share them with the rest of your club. So also our code of ethics, to seek success and to demand all fair remuneration of profit as my just due, but to accept no profit or success at the price of my own self-respect, lost because of unfair advantage taken or because of questionable acts on my part. To remember that in building up my business, it is not necessary to tear down another's, to be loyal to my clients or customers and true to myself. Next slide, please. So whenever a doubt arises as to the right or ethics of my position or action towards others, to resolve such doubt against myself, to hold friendship as an end and not a means, to hold that true friendship exists not on account of the service performance by one to another, but that true friendship demands nothing but accept service in the spirit in which it is given, kindness. Always to bear in mind my obligations as a citizen to my nation, my state, and my community, and to give them my unswerving loyalty in word, act, and deed, to give them freely of my time, labor, and means. And I think this one's very important because when we talk about over 200 countries and territories around the world, we're all citizens of many, many nations. Again, the diversity, the respect, the kindness. Code of ethic to aid others by giving my sympathy to those in distress, my aid to the weak and my substance to the needy. And lastly, to be careful with my criticism and liberal with my praise to build up and not destroy. Next slide, please. There we go. So who in the club gets to oversee everything that I just talked about? Oh my goodness, the club president, the club president. And I copied and pasted this right from the LCI Learning Center. And if my computer were working properly, I was going to take you into my LCI, take you to the Learning Center and show you how you can get to the club president training, which I took almost every bit of this from. So if you go to the club training, you will be able to just whip through club president because I'm already doing that for you here. So think about that club presidents. You are the chief executive officer of the club who presides at all the meetings of the board of directors and the club. Now, what this doesn't say is that you are the one all be all, that you are the committee chairperson for everything, right? You are the CEO of the club. But how am I going to take care of all of these um, service activities, all of these committees, all the officers, the board of directors? 
Well, the next slide is going to show you who that team is. Next slide, please. Oh, no, that's, I'm sorry. That, that's where I goofed up. My apologies. Um, I thought I had that slide, but I do not. That is the slide on the training that shows the um, makeup of the Lions Club. And in that is all of the executive officers, all of the board of directors, the chair, the chairs of the committees, the lion tamer, where the members all fit in. So I do encourage you to go to that um, virtual training on my LCI and go to the Learn Center and look at the club president training. And the reason that I was gonna bring up that one big slide that I couldn't tend to copy and paste was because you are not alone. You club presidents have a team and don't be afraid to use the team. The team is the secretary who's gonna help type up the agenda, who's gonna send out the reminders. Part of the team is the treasurer who's going to give an account of everything going on in the club treasury help collect dues. It's gonna be the lion tamer who's gonna help put out all of the club paraphernalia before the meeting and ensure that it gets put away. And I always like to highlight, it is going to be the person in the club who makes the coffee before the meetings. And I love the coffee maker of the club because I tell people if my club was waiting for me to make the coffee, I have a tendency to get talking and the coffee never gets made. So no job is ever too small in a Lions Club, and it may be too big. And I think sometimes the club presidents try to do too much, and that is where we need to step back, and I encourage you to step back. And remember that you may be the CEO, but the CEO of the club has a whole team below them a whole team below them to make it the best year possible. The service committee chair, the global membership chair, and I know PCC Mahesh did a presentation on the global membership. Um, oh, I'm drawing a blank now that I wanna think of it because it was on my slide um, that he had presented yesterday, if I'm not mistaken. And all of that, is overwhelming and we always say, how am I gonna do all of this? And I always like to say, how do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time, right lions? One bite at a time. It doesn't mean we have to eat the whole elephant at one meal and it doesn't mean we have to learn this all in one setting. And that's why I'll keep referring to the learning center in my LCI because there are so many great programs there for you to go back to, for you to refresh your memory. And as a club president, I just can't encourage you enough to use the team. I can only guess that all of you have been a member for more than one year. And I'm gonna guess that because I did attend a club meeting where the line was a member for six months and their club president moved out of the area and he was put in as club president. So as Lions members, we typically sit back in the meeting and we respect the leader in the front. And a lot of us will say, I'm never gonna do that. I'm never gonna be there, right? And then all of a sudden here we are. So I thank you for stepping forward and taking on this challenge and being willing to be the club president. You've looked at many things, many organizations, probably many committees and wondered how would you do, maybe this is what you would do, this is what you wouldn't do. And that's great. That's a great way to start planning for your year. I think what one thing people don't talk to leaders about is once you get in front of the crowd, once you get in front of the club, not only are you thinking about what you're saying now, but you're thinking about what you've already said and you're thinking about what you're going to say. And then you know you have all these eyes on you. So the nerves are going to be up. The hands might be a little bit shaky, the palms sweaty, and you may stutter a little bit, and that's okay. That's a good time to just realize you're human. Just take a deep breath, recollect, and continue. I think that there's a whole nother level of um, 
um, anxiety when you're holding a microphone or standing in front of a microphone. Because how many of us actually ever hear our voices over a loudspeaker system? Not very often. And as we're trying to think about what we said, what we're saying, what we're going to say, and then we hear ourselves talking, it tends to become overwhelming. And we do, we all tend to stumble. But the more you do it, the more you practice, the better you get at it. So if you stumble a little bit, that's okay. Welcome to being human, and no one is going to slight you for that. But when we do talk about leaders and the slide that is up there is characteristics of leaders. And I think every one of us here will agree that this is probably what we're looking for in leaders, but also what our club is looking for in us when we're choosing to step forward in a leadership role. Now, I like to tell every lion in every event and Leos that every one of us here, every one of you here is a leader. And some of the lions and Leos will like hide behind another lion or a Leo because they don't want to be seen. And others will sit up and say, yeah, thank you. You're right. Every one of us is a leader because every one of us is doing something in the club, right down to the lion or the Leo that makes the coffee, makes the tea. Maybe it's the lion or Leo next meeting that's going to bring the baked goods or the treat or the dessert for after the meeting. That's being a leader. And I always like to tease people when we're having um, fundraisers because I'm typically the greeter or the dishwasher. And I tell people, oh my goodness, the food is delicious because I'm doing the dishes. And then they finally realize, oh, that means because she's not cooking. <laughs> and that's okay. That's not a big strength of mine, cooking. And so I let those others do that. But honesty and integrity is just a huge characteristic for leaders. We all know we don't like to be um, have the wool pulling over our eyes, be told one story and find out another story. Confidence is something that we're always working on. And believe it or not, as a leader, you're always inspiring others. You may not know it and you may find out in the most interesting times. Like they say, be careful what you do because somebody is always watching. And that is very true. Your commitment to even step forward to the leadership position is already a great um, characteristic that we're seeing in you and the passion. Now, we all have different levels of commitment and passion, right? Um, I, I have seen some club presidents that are just almost the dictators of the club and it works. And then there's some that like to do just the bare minimum to make it by. But a lot of the lions that tend to be maybe viewed as doing the bare minimum, they're really relying on their team to help them through. And they're expecting their team members to do their portion to help keep the Lions Club going. So most leaders are good communicators. That's something that we're always, always working on. Um, how many times do we say something and somebody says, oh, I didn't know that. And you think, oh, I told you that. Well, maybe I thought I told you and I didn't. Or maybe I did send the email, but it was along 10 other emails that you received from how many Lions Clubs that day. And so maybe it just wasn't seen. So good communication is always a number one thing. And I know that's difficult because people say, we put out a newsletter, we do you know, cards, we do um, emails. And the old saying, you can drag a horse to water, but you can't make them drink. So as long as you know that you're doing what you can, please keep communicating. Decision-making capabilities. Sometimes this is a very difficult thing for leaders. And then that's where a lot of the other characteristics come in. Because we don't have to be the dictator to make that decision all the time. Sometimes we may need to. And then there's online through LCI, there's a great conflict and resolution um, training. And I have to stop saying training because like you said, PCC, PCC Mahesh, we don't train lions, but there's a good program on that. And accountability. And how many times do you hear people say, if you say you're going to do it, do it. Write yourself a note, right? And if you do forget, don't be afraid to say, I'm sorry, I forgot. What did you need and when did you want that? 
I had had to learn how to humbly say I'm sorry before I always tried to just kind of hurry up and maybe get it done. But we are human. So don't beat yourself up too much for that. Nope, that was perfect. Go on to the next slide. Delegation and empowerment. I just cannot stress that enough. As the CEO, as the club president, you are not in charge of everything. Creativity and innovation. And a lot of people are going to say, I'm not creative. You bring your personal creativity to the club. And it's part of that creativity would help get you to the leadership role that you're in. Empathy, empathy. I think one of the biggest things, um, especially when I was district governor, is I really had to realize that not everybody is as excited and has the passion that I do, and that all lions are giving their 100% whether they're only able to make it to one Lions Club meeting a year, whether they're a hundred percent Lion, they're doing the best they can. Leaders are resilient. There's a lot of up and downs in the leadership role. There's a lot of conflict resolution, maybe not always, um, but resilience. And don't be afraid to have the person that you go to, that you can confide in, and it may not even be a lion to help you sometimes um, triage those things out. This also is a great place to think of going to your zone chair. In your roster books, find out who your zone chair is. Don't be afraid to call your zone chair and introduce yourself before they call you and introduce themselves. They're gonna be a great resource because as a zone chair, they've already been a club president possibly even the club secretary. So they may be able to help you battle through some of the difficult times that you may be having. Humility, we all need a little bit of humility. Transparency, it's pretty obvious at times when people aren't transparent and then the vision and purpose. And I already gave you the purpose and I'm gonna ask you to help keep that vision. So those are some characteristics of a good leader. Are we all of those 100% of the time? Heck no. Do we try, strive to be almost all of those 100% of the time? I would say yes. Uh, but sometimes we do get tired and sometimes we need to take a step back and take care of ourselves. And that's where the psychiatric nurse in me comes into play. Um, because if you're not taking care of yourself, how do you take care of others? If you're overdoing it and you're doing just a little bit for everything, but not 100% for anything, what's ever going to get accomplished? So leaders, take care of yourselves. Next slide, please. So don't be afraid to look at yourselves in the mirror and say, what are my strengths as a leader? Well, obviously you have some great strengths or your Lions Club wouldn't have asked you to step forward. And maybe they saw that glimmer that you are really insecure about and unsure about, but they know you can do it. So have faith in yourself. Don't be afraid to look at your challenges as a leader. And don't say, oh, I'm not good about talking in front of others. I'm not gonna be club president. Not very many of us were very good at speaking in front of crowds. And it's something that truly, truly takes time to practice, to practice, and to practice on our challenges, to improve on our challenges, to acknowledge our strengths. Next slide, please. So the strengths and the um, challenges, those are great times to look at the characteristics, to think and look at where you feel you fit in. Is this some place where I am really strong at? Is this some place where I need more growth at? And hopefully you'll really enjoy your year as a club president. But I also want you to, as you're going through your club presidency, if you haven't put in for like the Advanced Lion Leadership Institutes, the um, Faculty Development Institute, the Lion Certified Instructor Institutes, to go ahead and research those on Lions Club International and look at those Leadership Institute possibilities, potential trainings. We have seen so many Lions that have attended the different trainings. And my shining star from my district is a very quiet, quiet, quiet Lion. She would stand around the corner practically in a meeting and like 
wave her hand when her name was called for attendance. And she attended a leadership institute, an RLLI. And within a year, she was standing in front of our cabinet giving a report. And she actually went from the back of the room giving the report to standing in front of the room giving the report. And I stood up and gave her a rounding um, round of applause when she stood in front of the cabinet one day and said, I need you. And I'm like, yes. And it finally gave her the confidence in herself to stand in front and be secure with who she is. So thank you again, Lyons, for your time, especially your time um, out of this beautiful um, Wednesday evening. And I would like to now open it up to questions. Um, hopefully I have the answers. If not, I will direct you to where you can find them. But this is my personal email and please do not be afraid to email me. Do give me at least a day or two sometimes to respond. And if you'll notice, um, my email address is PDG, and that's because I'm still very proud that I'm a past district governor. It was one of the greatest times. So thank you again, and let's open it up for questions. Thank you, PID. Jenny, for that wonderful, enlightening presentation on club leadership. We really learned a lot tonight. We are fully blessed, truly blessed to have this opportunity. So um, as uh, PID Jenny said, uh, any questions? Or any leadership stories that anybody would like to share possibly on, um, maybe a character that they were able to work on and improve upon to help um, with some leadership situations that they endured somewhere along their lion's years. You may raise your hand or you can type your question in the chat box. So we'll, we'll be on the lookout for those. Well, I do appreciate all of the thank yous. It, it has been a true pleasure to be here. And I think that one of the greatest things about Lionism is I joined Lions um, to serve, to be with my um, parents, to be with their friends, and to get to know our neighbors. I moved to the area that my parents were living in, and I really didn't know anybody and the next thing I knew, I was being asked to be secretary, and then I was asked to be this and that. And I have just been enjoying lionism. And so when somebody turned and asked me if I was ready to become a zone chair, what? You know, so sometimes you do all these wonderful things and you get involved and you don't even realize that you are becoming a leader. Um, so it was really something that even I had to take a step back look in the mirror and say, oh yeah, I guess I'm a leader. I thought I was just being a lion, doing good things with other good people. So if there's any questions. Okay, we have one question here. All right, yay. How can a president motivate members who are not as passionate as you are? Ah. Very good question. You know, that's a really interesting question because one of the things that I've noticed is just because they don't seem, number one, as passionate as me, doesn't mean they're not passionate. And I pick on my poor cousin, Sherry. I'm the one, here, being the cheerleader, right? And she's the one sitting back and just kind of nodding her head once in a while. And when you say, Sherry, did you have a good time? Yep. You wanna do it again? Yep. And she truly had a good time. 
So we don't always show our passion in the same way. But if you're speaking maybe of their passion because they're not getting as involved, maybe we haven't found what their passion is. Maybe we haven't found the service project that they would like to do. Maybe they want to be the coffee maker for the club meeting and we could switch off. So I would truly think that if we see someone who we feel might be sliding and maybe not sitting at the front of the room anymore, don't be afraid to reach out to their sponsor. Their sponsor knows them best. That's why they were um, asked to come into the club, um, talk with the sponsor. If you feel comfortable talking with the club member, or maybe even the sponsor would like to talk to the club member. So that's an excellent question. Thank you for asking that. Okay. And uh, we have another one here. Could you please go over the club's president's board and how they help the president? So the board, how does the board help the club president? So at the board meetings where all of the official um, uh, decisions are made, and I kind of say that with quotations because if you're like my club that was under 20 members for a very long time, we just held all of our meetings all at once and made all our decisions. But we have some clubs that are over 100 strong and you can't have open discussions on every single decision being made at every club meeting. So the board of directors help guide and help make decisions for the president. So remembering as president, you're running the meeting, you've got the agenda, whether it be the business meeting, whether it be the board meeting. And so the board, when you're in the board meetings, that's where you're really hashing out the nuts and the bolts, the black and the white of every decision and taking a vote and taking that majority vote back to the club. So that's an excellent question. Thank you. Did that answer it? If not, please say so in the chat. Okay. Okay, here's another question. Could you say a little, a little about why LCIF should be important to a club president? Okay. So LCIF, Lions Club International Foundation, I happen, as most of us may know, we're in the middle of a capital campaign of raising $300 million. And that capital campaign ends June 30th of 2022. I am the vice chairperson, along with past international president, Joe Preston, who is the chairperson for Constitutional Area One to help encourage and raise the funds for the capital campaign again for Constitutional Area One. The foundation is a place where Lions can go, where we have donated our money, whether it be individual or whether it be through the club, where we can say, hey, we would really like to do a project, but we really can't afford that big of a project. So we can look towards a grant, look for a grant, matching grant, maybe a 25%, whatever the grant may be. And it allows Lions clubs, Lions districts to do bigger things that they would not be able to do alone. So I think every incoming president here, I think every sitting president and probably every past president can look at a time in their lion's life where their district, maybe their region or even their club received a grant that helped them do something even bigger and better than they would have ever been able to do on their own. So yes, all of our money that goes to the foundation, 100% does go to back to the community for grants. And I know a lot of Lions say, well, how can that be? We have administrative costs. Yes, we do. Our foundation was founded in 1968. So we're over 50 years old. And through those years, the foundation has been able to invest the monies so that all of our administrative costs comes out of what we make off of those monies. So that's why we can say yes, even though we pay administrative costs, it comes from what our investments make. So it's not coming from the dollar that I give or the $5 I give. So thank you for that great question. And thank you presidents for helping support the foundation. That's very enlightening and encouraging at the same time. <laughs> Heidi, Jenny. Oh, I'm glad we have some questions here. Good. Okay. Uh, let's see. 
any strategies or experiences you can share on encouraging member involvement? Strategies, um, basically, again, it's finding the passion. It's finding what the members want to do and not getting discouraged if the club thinks this is the next best idea, um, you know, to, you know, starting a new world and only two members want to do it. I tend to think that almost no service project is too small because if those two members truly enjoy that service project or truly enjoy that fundraiser, why not do it? Why not? Um, when I had stated earlier, it doesn't matter if the club member makes it once a year or is 100%. We had a club member who lost her husband and she didn't attend a club meeting in three years. But every year when we had our bake sale, she backed up with her truck and unloaded the most baked goods than all of the rest of the club put together. And so that was her passion and she enjoyed it. So again, I would just say, just because not everybody in the club is joining in 100% on something, it doesn't mean that it's not a good thing. It's not a good thing. It's a good thing if at least one member likes it. Okay, well, we have the questions here at the chat box. Uh, you may also raise your hand, and I would like to ask the help of Lyne Varsha and Lyne Mahesh to look for them. Uh, it would be nice to unmute them and uh, ask the questions themselves. But let me go through some more questions here. Okay, there are some clubs having same person as president for years. How to encourage to prepare for the next line of action? That's nice. You know, I'm going to be a little sassy here. Sometimes you've got that vice president who's been sitting behind you and doesn't want to move forward. And you say, okay, next meeting, I'm going to let you run the meeting. And they're like, no, no, not yet, not yet. Well, sometimes the club president might have to <laughs> not make it to that next meeting and let the vice president. That's kind of mean. So I don't mean to be real snarky. Um, but I think if we go back and just remember, remember how we felt when we were sitting in that position for the first time, whether it be the chairperson, the secretary, the club president, because some club presidents just do such a fantastic job. You feel like you can never live up to them and you're just gonna look like a terrible president if you follow them. Remember, you're not them and your club knows you're not them. And so encourage your alliance that we're asking you for you, for your individuality. Um, and I do know that there are a few clubs that continue to do great after 10 years with the same club president, but ultimately change is okay because it really makes us start thinking differently. So we're not in the same old rut. Like the pandemic kind of made us think and um, get out of our comfort zones. So excellent question. Thank you. Okay, is there anybody who would like to uh, ask the question personally? So, not, not, nobody yet? So anyway, let's- uh, There's one more question, Rohel, from Cash. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to, okay. Yeah. yeah, I have here, let's see. Oh, I have, uh, before him, there's another one. Yeah. In your current role, what do you find as your biggest obstacle? My biggest obstacle in my current role is continuing to work my real job. <laughs> um, today was a very uh, busy, heavy day. And I'm thinking, dang, why do I have to have a day like this when I'm going off to do the training? Um, but the biggest obstacle probably for me um, is sometimes just learning to say not today. It's not that I want to say no. And I did say that to Lion Varsha. Um, and it hurt me so greatly to say, I'm sorry, Lion Varsha, I'm already committed. But we were then able to talk. And I wasn't committed to anything else today. And we made it work. And I feel so grateful um, that you were willing to um, help me out so that I could be here. So time management is always the big thing. And, and truly learning to say, um, 
I'm not available or I have a prior commitment. It's not saying just the two letters N-O. Um, it still feels difficult. Um, and again, I do take those times where I just need to shut everything off and I'll take a, a day for myself to re-energize my batteries. That's always a great idea too. So it can keep you going. But I do know that what does keep me going is seeing all the smiling faces like today, getting these wonderful questions. Um, there's no 100% right answer, but sometimes just hearing other people's perspectives helps. And I'll, I'll be honest with you, I borrowed a couple of those responses from other people that I've heard through my years also. Okay. Yeah, please uh, continue asking those questions and uh, there's no wrong question. So the uh, ID Jenny is here to answer all these questions. <laughs> okay. Let's see. Uh, why is a Leo Club cannot, cannot have a president for more than one year? So I'm, I'm not real up on um, the probably constitution and bylaws for the Leos, um, but I'm going to refer to, is Lion Mahesh still online? Would he be able to unmute and help with that? I think that uh, is the perfect question for a Leo advisor. The, uh, let me check up on something else. Let, let's hold on to that question. Okay. The, the good person to answer that would be Ojas because he's up on the, uh, uh, the constitution bylaws. Let me check. He was in a meeting. Let me check he was done. Let's hold on to that question. Okay. okay. Before, uh, yeah, that's right. Let's go to the next question. Somebody here said, I'm currently a Leo president and I want to quote on a quote train a successor. How would you suggest going about finding out who would be a good fit? Since this is another Leo question. Okay. You know, and I think that would fit a lot like the lions. And I think um, the more you get to know each and every member in your club, whether it be a Leo club, a Lions Club or any other organization or even work, you when you get to learn who people are, what their strengths are, um, it helps you kind of figure out where you think they would be best. You can't always assume that because I'm a nurse, I always want to sit at the first aid station if we're having a 5K race, right? Uh, so getting to know the Lions, getting to know the Leos, see what they may be interested in, and, and sometimes asking them the hard question and saying, hey, I think you would make a great, have you ever considered being in this position? And don't be worried when their first response 109 times is going to be not me, but one of those times that they might say, hey, yeah, with your assistance, I would like to do that. Okay, looks like uh, Leo Lion Ojas is here to answer the question a while ago. Uh, it, I believe I'm answering the question from VDG Cash, and I'm very sorry, I'm in a separate meeting. For those of you who don't know, I'm currently on a committee for Special Olympics New Jersey, and I had a meeting for that, so I apologize. Uh, so the question is why a Leo club can't have a president for more than one year. From international and in our multiple district, there is no restriction on a uh, legal president having a term more than one year, that may be a club rule that they've instituted in their bylaws, but officially there is no restriction. Thank you all so much. Uh, see you Thank later. you. Okay. Thank so, you. Hi, PDI. Hi, okay, PDI. Okay. Hi, Ujis. Great to see you, Leo Lyon. You're also multitasking. Huh? <laughs> Isn't that fantastic? Yes, they ran away. Okay. So the yeah. official answer is it's not in the constitution and bylaws for a Leo to um, only be a club president for one year. But again, the club may have put that in. And again, that would be just to encourage other Leos to step forward into that position. Um, here in the United States, our Leos are from 13 to 18 years old. It's a very short time span. And in those few years, you would have that many different leaders at the helm for them to practice their leadership roles before they go on to college. That would be my response is to encourage that. Yeah, the, the youth are our future. That's right. Are here, are now, and are then. Yes. Okay, it looks like this is a membership a question. How to encourage members to attend monthly club meetings? 
there again, with all of the things that we're able to be involved in, and I know we're going to be getting right back into the old routine of being super busy all the time. If you notice, I think 100% attendance awards haven't been as prominent as they had been over 20 years ago. And again, I don't think that a lion who doesn't attend every meeting is not a 100% lion. They're doing the best they can. And now that we have the virtual along with the in-person, hopefully clubs will continue to have the hybrid, to have the virtual and the um, in-person. I'm really gonna ask my club to do that. There's days where I get home from work and I just don't have that energy to get up and to get back in the car and travel 15 minutes to my club. But we also have those parents that literally could attend a meeting from their van as they're sitting with their kids at the soccer field, or maybe um, they're taking a break from something else that they're doing. So perfect attendance, monthly attendance isn't always, I think what it's cracked up to be. But if we do see people that are missing for a while, is there something that maybe that we can reach out to that member and make them a part of, or even just to say, hey, did you get the minutes? Do you have any comments? Um, again, the communication, and that's why we have the membership chair. Um, so bring in the whole team on that. Those would be my suggestions. We have a couple of questions here before we go to the, uh, to ask everybody, a lot of you, or most of you to raise your hands and ask the questions. Uh, let's see. The uh, idea, Jenny, thanks a lot for a great, for a great tips. I mean, I know if there have, there have there is lifetime membership system. Let's see. May I know? Is there a lifetime member? So, if you are asking, um, can you become a life member of Lions Clubs International? Yes, you can. Um, if I'm not mistaken, you have to be a member of at least 20 years. Um, there's a set dollar amount, and that is in on the Lions Club International website. Or if you just go to your Google search and put um, Lions Life Membership and search that, that will give you, yes, thank you, Winster, $650. Um, I kind of thought it was that. Those are wonderful uh, gifts for Lions maybe that um, have been doing a lot for the club and aren't stepping up into the leadership role, but they're the ones that your club wouldn't be there if it weren't for that person. So those are nice awards to also give um, Lions. So yes, don't be afraid to look that one up. I think it's a minimum of 25 years, maybe even 55 years old, and I can't remember on the age. So I'm waiting for Winster to help me out here and type that up. <laughs> <laughs> Picking on you, Winster. Yes, Past council chair. To be, they have a lifetime membership. That's great. Okay, what is the role of president slash secretary as a member of the district governor advisory committee? That's a great question. What is the role of the president secretary as the district governor advisory committee? So when we were talking about zone meetings, we were talking about the communication, not only coming down from the district governor to share with the clubs what's going on, but also the other way up. So if there are concerns for the club, if there are new ideas, if there's anything, that's a great time to share with the zone chair for the zone chair to bring to the district governor. Um, I think one of the great things that I can think of that happened in our district is we had a club that started a community garden and it grew into this unbelievable 401c3. And because the lions were um, a part of that initial community garden, they were able to keep the zone chair updated who kept the cabinet updated. And now that program is a district project and we're helping go for a grant. So think of the district governor and the secretary as the information providers from their club to the zone and the governor and on back. Very important role. Thank you. And there's a follow-up question to that. Can you elaborate 
the same for the role of president slash secretary in a club, please? So what's the role of the president and secretary in a club? Well, without the president, we'd have chaos, right? Because who would, who would chair and who would lead the meetings? And without the secretaries keeping track of what happened at the last meeting with the old business and new business and correspondence, um, it would just be chaos. So kudos to our club presidents for keeping us on track and kudos to the secretaries for keeping us on the paper trail on track and keeping minutes of um, what we've done, especially when we're voting on things that where's the money going or um, if somebody questions anything that's happened, we always have the records that we can go back and um, review what and why, where we are. So thank you. Okay, uh, looks like there's, there are no more questions in the chat box. So uh, I believe Lion Cash raised his hand a while ago. If you could uh, unmute yourself. Thank you. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. Rogel Bautista, uh, GLT. E. <laughs> my, <laughs> my, question, my question was, uh, I did, I've been a leader advisor for several years, maybe five or six years for my uh, uh, community schools here. And there, it is the first time that the president who, uh, who was elected last year, and she has been elected president again this year. But when I go to report on LCI, on my LCI, it said, no, you cannot have a president second, to second term. It is not the club rule, it is the, M it's the LCI rules. And, and, and a sim simple, a small comment on uh, the uh, life membership. In my club, I have a life member for well, at least the last 30 years. Uh, I don't know how much he paid at that time, but I think it's, it came very, uh, very nice, very, uh, He's saving a chunk of money. Uh, he, the, being a life member, of course, you have to just lay out some money in the front. But the advantage is that you don't pay the international dues for the rest of your life. So this gentleman has saved thousands of dollars over the years. <laughs> Thank you, Lion Cash, for pointing that out. That once you pay that six hundred and fifty dollars up front, you don't pay the international dues anymore. You do pay the district and the club dues, but not the international dues. Right. Yep, and if you get it early on um, <laughs> and you live long, you save lots yeah. of money, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> and, and you're right, Lion Cash, international does strongly encourage us not to repeat our officers. A, to keep the newness, to keep the freshness, right? Yep. And also once we take on like secretary or treasurer or president, then it also opens up other leadership opportunities at the district level. And a lot of people will say, I'm not doing this to um, become a district officer. And I don't know if anybody ever joins lionism to become the president of their club or to become the district governor. It's things that happen along the way. It's things that lions see in other lions and encourage them to step forward. This is something that's been going on in lions for decades, for over a century. And it's neat that Lions Club International is now realizing how we are making leaders out of ourselves and we're becoming a much more professional organization. Oh, we always have been. I shouldn't say we are. We always have been. We just never really thought of ourselves like that. But when you take a step back and you look at, I'm sure, Lion Cash, where you are today compared to your first five years of lionism, you're probably a much different, a much um, more of course. knowledgeable lion. Of course. But however, I want to make one more additional comment, and that yes. is... Uh, if, you, if there is a uh, president in a Leo club, of course, he or she cannot be president again, but they can have a different role. Uh, could be vice president or secretary or treasurer. They, they allowed the, uh, so the, well, the person who was elected as vice president, she stepped up as a president and the person who was elected president a second time, she had to take a step back, become vice president. So the system allows, allows for those opportunities. Very good. Thank, Thank you, you, sir, for Thanks. pointing Thanks. that out. Thank you. Thank you, Lion Cash. I just want to, to point out that there is a reaction uh, 
button at the bottom. So if you want to raise your hand, it's easier for us to spot. <laughs> okay, I believe uh, PCC Jack Romano also raised his hand a while ago. Yeah, he raised the hand, Avinster. Yeah, PCC Jack. Go ahead, PCC Jack. We can't hear you, PCC Jack. Okay. Did you actually... unmute him? I couldn't unmute no, no, him. No, no, I'm, I'm, I'm good. I had the cough button pressed on the microphone. Good evening, everybody. Uh, thank you, PID Jenny, uh, for an interesting presentation. Just a couple of comments, please, on uh, attending meetings. From my own perspective, when I first joined in 2001, as most of you know on the call, I worked for the post office and I worked nights. And for 29 out of the 39 years that I worked for the post office, I worked all the oddest hours that you could think of. So I could never make a meeting. However, the club always sent me the minutes. I always knew what was going on. I always knew when the service activities were. And I always was able to manage to squeeze myself into these service activities while not being able to attend meetings unless I had off like on a Tuesday or a Wednesday or some crazy thing like that. And they had a meeting on one of those days where I, I had as a rest day. So, you know, attendance is great. All right. It, it, it keeps everybody in the loop, uh, makes you knowledgeable of what's going on and how the club operates and where you may want to go in terms of advancing through the club chairs and officerships. All right, but everybody's an individual and each individual situation is different. As for the uh, life membership, I believe it's 20 years. As Winston Pope pointed out, it's $650. And as Jenny and Cash pointed out, uh, that's for international dues only. You still have to pay district and club dues. And I thank, thank everybody. It's nice to see you, Lion Jack. Same that's here. <laughs> May I say a couple of words again? Uh, the, I think I learned from uh, PCC Jack that we share, in my club also, we made a policy of sending out the minutes of the board meeting to all members so that they feel encouraged to participate, to become, to step up or something. And uh, I mean, it's really, it's great uh, excitement that uh, brings them into the loop and uh, we, we get uh, here and there we encourage members, the regular members also to join our board meetings. So it's open to everybody. Of course, they cannot make a decision or they cannot vote, but uh, they are always welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lion Cash. My pleasure. I'm looking for people who are raising their hands. I couldn't find any. <laughs> any more questions? Come on, let's take advantage of the presence <laughs> of uh, PID Jenny here. So I will share that yesterday it only got up to 60 degrees. Um, I don't know what it was like on the East Coast there, but the last two days we had quite the chill in the air. We almost, almost, almost had to put the heater on in the house, but today it's warmed up to a balmy 70, so it's much nicer. <laughs> I think you are sending that cold to us. Uh, meanwhile, like sort of, I was just looking at the uh, Constitution and Bylaws uh, uh, VDG Cash. Yes. And it shows that uh, you can have multiple terms, but uh, you can uh, you cannot hold two positions at the same time. Well, uh, well, uh, when I was reporting the same president second year, the MYLCA says no, it's not allowed. Yeah, there's a there must be some technical glitch. Okay, there, uh, that I don't know. Yeah, let me maybe, maybe I should call MILC. Yeah, yeah, yeah. that will be the best thing because even I, I recall that like uh, we had to repeat a precedent once uh, because of our we were restructuring the club and we had to repeat the precedent once and uh, we could. And this is recently, like sort of two years back. Great, thank you. Thanks, Lion Mass. Uh, we have here a uh, PCC, Mike Pakala. How are you, sir? 
let's hear we have some thoughts or questions a few words Well, while PCC Mike um, tries to unmute, I am going to remind everybody that our first ever 100% virtual Lions Club International Convention is getting ready to start up. So if you have not registered, please do. Um, like they're saying, when are you ever going to be able to visit an International Lions Convention for only $75? Um, most of it is going to be recorded, but there are going to be some live streaming and there are some clubs that are holding um, club watch parties. Um, I just think it's going to be a great time to share uh, with your club, with your families, uh, with the great things that happen at Alliance Clubs International Convention. They're still going to do things like the Parade of Nations. We're going to be able to watch the election of the officers and the incoming governors, our DGEs, uh, Lion Varsha and Marie, are going to actually have a swearing in ceremony. And it's from 9 a.m. to 11 a.m. on Monday, if I'm not mistaken, if that's the 29th, as I don't have my calendar in front of me. And so I think that would be just um, worth the money to watch your incoming governors and see the wonderful celebration that they get to have uh, when they come in. Okay. Okay. Good. Okay. This is Mike Patala. Hi. Sorry, we had a little little glitch there. Uh, didn't get to see all of the presentations today, but I think uh, they're all very worth worthwhile. Uh, your year as president will go extremely fast, so to be prepared and be ready to go uh, from step one is excellent. Um, please use your PDGs, use your your uh, PCCs. There's a lot of knowledge out there. A lot of people out there willing to help you. Just just use them. Uh, that's what they're there for. That's what they are waiting to do. So uh, it'll make everybody's job a lot easier. Good luck to everybody. Thank you, PCC Mike. Not PCC yet. Not yet. Not, Not yet. yet. Not yet. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Yes, it is. <laughs> it is. Oh, Thank you, PCC Chair Mike. <laughs> <laughs> the hell is you got a whole PCC? week left. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. My apologies. <laughs> Not a problem. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe we'll have another pandemic and you can stay a whole nother year, Lion Mike. <laughs> Why? What do I ever do to you? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your wisdom. That's true. So when we're talking about the team for the club presidents, it's not just in the district or in the club. It's also throughout the whole district, throughout the multiple districts. So thank you so much, Council Chair. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, we have uh, some a raised hand here from incoming GLT chair Anu Chitnis. That's uh, okay. Yeah, yeah. Thank you, thank you, Lion Rohel. So, PID Jenny, I I really want to thank you for coming uh, to our dist uh, multiple district uh, once again, and I wanted to comment on your time management. Uh, or your challenge, you said. I don't think the challenge is time management. That's the price that you pay to be so good and energetic that everyone wants you to attend their meetings. So I don't think it's time management. It's just that you're that good. So thank you for your time once again for coming here and talking to us. Very much appreciated. Thank you, Lion Anu. That was very, very kind. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lion Anu. I do really appreciate the virtual. Um, maybe it's not the best. It's not what we would want, right? We would always want to be in person, but I just really commend multiple District 16 on embracing it because we, you would have never been able to bring in this many speakers in such a short time to do this. You've got the New Jersey um, Visionary Leo Cyber Club that has been doing their leadership series. Your area has really been 
using this platform for what it was meant for. And it's bringing lions around the world together when we would not have been able to do this. Um, I wouldn't have been able to come out on a Wednesday evening um, for a training. And who knows if we would have been able to get all of the presenters together for one weekend, or would we have ever been able to do that? So it's really brought our global lions in as our neighbors. And it's just fantastic that you're doing this. So thank you for using this platform and showing others that it can work. Looks like it's uh, this a great blessing for the pandemic. <laughs> if there has to be a silver lining, I think this yeah. might be it, right? I had to learn how to um, screen share when my computer was working, and <laughs> but that's okay. That's okay, right? Let's see. Anybody else? Uh, Okay, Live Mahes, any thoughts? Other thoughts? The PID Jenny has covered it all. Uh, only thing that I would ask for is like sort of to just pile on to what Anu said. We, we want energy from uh, PID Jenny. Uh, I remember her meeting in one of the, uh, I don't remember whether it was a Grand Rapid Forum or uh, at Forum in Milwaukee. Uh, her Rapids. Grand, Grand Rapids. Grand Rapids, most probably. Yeah. The, the energy is infectious, like sort of. Uh, I remember talking to her in the, uh, the, the Lions shop at the, at the, uh, the Forum, and uh, I was just uh, thrilled by the energy that she had. And I think it was end of the day, and she was still bubbling and <laughs> we, we need to get that energy from her so that we can take our uh, association forward and we really appreciate uh, PID Jenny for coming in and uh, helping us out. Thank you, past Council Chair Mahesh, very kind. I like to tell people I get my energy from you so if you're feeling drained it's because I took it all so thank you, thank you for your energy Thank you for giving me the enthusiasm to keep going too. So um, it, it's a nice two-way street. If we had a one-way street, it would all be the wrong way. So I'm glad that, that we're able to connect, we're able to share and especially share and share ideas and hear the different ideas and just different viewpoints, whether we agree or not, that's 100% that's okay. But it gives us the chance to be able to share ideas and to think to think. So thank you again for this wonderful opportunity. Again, I commend you all for this great series this week, and hopefully I'll be able to pop in tomorrow night. Thank you. Thank you, PID Jenny. Uh, let's, let's hear from incoming council chair, Armando Guerra. I I can't find him. Yeah, there he is. So, can you hear me? It's a bit difficult. Can you hear me now? Yes. Are we? We're good. We're good. So, so oh, thank you so much. So, the. Jenny, thank you so much for taking the time at the and yeah, and thank you for distributing that energy, that the energy that you took, you're distributing it to all of us equally. And we are so proud of you and we're so thankful that you're sharing all your knowledge and educating us, educating the MD16. We're much greatly appreciated and hopefully that we could see you in the next international conference in person. And I believe that I'm going to be at the part of Varsha's the Zumba class, so be ready. <laughs> I'm ready for Zumba. <laughs> I, I, and I know that I have, I have two big here, Armando here. and Jenny. <laughs> so, so, thank you so much, speaker for tomorrow, uh, PCC Mike. 
Yeah, he's here, yeah. Yeah, I yep. know, that's right. Can't, can't wait for it. And on Friday, we have PID uh, Cindy Gregg, who is also here tonight. Is it Mike, you want to say something for tomorrow's event so our members should know that what we are doing it for the digital resources, just a one word. I think he's unmuted. PCC Mike. Okay. Yeah. Yes, uh, uh, yes. Hey, thanks for the, uh, the shout out. Um, as long as there's no Zumba, we're gonna have a great course tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> I, I promise no Zumba tomorrow. <laughs> So we're going to we're going to explore the, uh, the uh, virtual universe that is lions. And even if you have a flip phone or you're scared of technology, we're going to join this uh, uh, journey tomorrow together. And I look forward to seeing the lions on. Thank you. Thanks, Varsha. Thank you. Mike. Thank you. Thank you. We have some time. Yeah, so we have we have PID Cindy Greg also. Let's have a PID Cindy. Did you unmute her? Let's see. I'm trying to find. Her. Oh, she's here. Yeah. Yeah, I found her. <laughs> we have to navigate through these pages. Hi, it's always wonderful to to be with you, and of course. I too enjoy past international director Jenny's enthusiasm and her passion. How can you not be excited after listening to her? And I'm looking forward to meeting with you on Friday for the refresher on secretaries and treasures. Unfortunately, I can't be with you tomorrow evening because I have a club installation. So thank you for doing this. Thank you, PID Cindy. And let's uh, listen also to any thoughts from PCC Winster. You let me know ahead of time so I could find this. <laughs> I found him. <laughs> you could unmute. Hello, everybody. I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute myself. Um, again, as I mentioned before, great. Jenny, thank you so much for coming to New Jersey. Um, we all will enjoy having you in our backyard. You know that you are a are, are, uh, New Jersey lion in heart. We all will enjoy you here. And uh, thank you for presenting. Very enjoyable, very informative. So I look forward to tomorrow and Friday. Thank you all. Thank you, PCC Winster. Anybody else? Any questions, thoughts before we close? Let's see. Nobody is raising his or her hand. Oh, do we have some Leos here? I think they are. Where are the Leos? Right, we has the I, I saw some of them a while ago, but like yeah, I'm I'm trying to find out. Leo Pranav Zoshi is raising the hand. Hi Leo Pranav, how are you? Yeah, uh, this is difficult to Uh, there Hi. is a hand raised by uh, VDG Cash. Cash, you can unmute. I have unmuted you a uh, while back. He remuted himself, so he did that. Yeah, he can't. Okay, I got it. Got it. I just want to quick make a quick uh, comment. Uh, the uh, the best quality that you would see in a president of a club is the uh, 
the excitement and passion that he or she brings to the club. And I see like what you see Rohel Bautista and PID Jenny, always smiling, always friendly, always receptive. And these are the qualities that we need. Uh, and, and, and again, uh, they are the two leaders who, who take, who hold hands of, the, of their subordinates and uh, train them and, and teach them the values so that they can be a great, great leader tomorrow. So that was my little comment for uh, presidents. Thank you. Thank you, Lion Cass. And I guess uh, we don't have any more, so we are going to conclude tonight's session. But before we do that, let's have a pictorial. How, how about that? May we ask everyone to please uh, turn on your videos if it's okay, so we could take a picture. Get ready to say cheese. Okay, let me start with page one. I don't know where what page you are, but uh, just keep, keep, keep smiling <laughs> and saying cheese. Okay, one, two, cheese. Okay, let me go to my page two. Okay, one, two, cheese. And the last page. Okay, one, two, cheese. Okay, that's great. Thank you all. Let me uh, just do the conclusion. Uh, so before we go to the uh, conclusion, uh, to conclude this evening's activity, we have some announcement to make. Tomorrow at the same time, 7 to 9 p.m., we'll have the fourth part of the training series, or call it refresher. There you go. On the subject, digital resources, my LION, or my LCI, as noted by uh, PCC Mike a while ago, and it will be another wonderful session to look forward to. And I hope everyone here has also registered to tomorrow's event. And to conclude our training week on Friday, the topic will be on the role of secretary and treasurer. Again, I won't get tired in emphasizing that each session is very important. So please con consider registering to all of them. And before we officially end, I would like to thank PID Jenny for sharing your time, your effort, and the wisdom on the topic that we had tonight. Thank you. I would also like to thank incoming state advisor and past council chair Mahesh Jutnis, incoming council chair Armando Guerra, this district governor, 16N governor-elect Marie Nieto, District 6J Governor-elect Varsha Naik for your participation and or background assistance in tonight's program. And I would like to acknowledge the presence of some officers who took their time to be with us tonight. PID Sinja Greg, State Advisor and PCC Jack Romano. I think he left already. PCC Winster Zibalios. PCC Mike Pakala, PCC Mike Eisenberg, <laughs> PDG Ruth Chua from the Philippines, Mabuhay, <laughs> 16J First Vice District Governor elect Cass Delori, 16J Second Vice District Governor elect Evelio Salermo. 16J Treasurer, Diane Andrade. Multiple 16 GLT Chair incoming. Anu Chitnis. And uh, if I miss your names, I apologize, but all, to all other officers of the district, past, current, or incoming. And everyone here tonight for your wonderful presence that made this event possible. Before we end, I would like to share a favorite quotation, if I may, to ponder upon or reflect on, if you will. And here it is. I have three precious things which I hold fast and prize. The first is gentleness. The second is frugality. The third is humility, which keeps me from putting myself before others. Be gentle and you can be bold. Be frugal and you can be liberal. Avoid putting yourself before others 
and you can become a leader among men from Laocha. Good night, everyone. Good night. Stay safe.